We're at the Buck O'Neill Complex and we're here with Felipe Alou Jr., who is the director of the Orioles Dominican Academy. Felipe, thanks so much for joining us here on Mass and All Access. Thank you. I'm glad I'm glad being here with you. Thanks, thanks for having me. So we gotta start with your family because you obviously come from a very important baseball family. Let's go back to your father, who was the first Dominican player to play regularly in the big leagues. What does it mean to carry on the Alou name, especially considering you're Felipe Alou Jr., named after your father? Um, you know, first of all, it's a blessing to, to carry our family name. I do it proudly, but also I understand the weight of it because of what they've done, what my dad did. I know he played in an area where those guys have to really push it back there, and he lay out the way for so many Dominicans. Uh, and then, you know, my brother Moises, and now my brother Luis. So, yeah. So yeah, it's a big weight on your shoulders, you can say, but also like, I mean, you car carry it so proudly. I'm glad you mentioned your brother, Luis. Of course, you were in New York for his introductory press conference as the new manager of the New York Mets. What was it like to see your brother named the new manager of the Mets? Pretty surreal. Going back to our uh, years when we were kids, playing around the house and playing, you know, games and watching TV and knowing uh, what he's done throughout his um, minor league career as a manager, uh, knowing that he paid his dues, like he developed as if he was a player, and getting this big opportunity now, I mean, it's, it's pretty surreal. I know he's pretty excited. Uh, we all are as a family. My dad, like he thinks he's, he's managing again. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's always, uh, he's always on the phone with him and all that stuff. and. He lives in Florida and he makes sure like he spends time with them. But definitely, definitely um, pretty, pretty surreal. And of course, your dad, as you mentioned, was a manager as well. Why do you think this family has been attracted to managing as well as playing? You know, my dad played baseball for so many years. And back then, uh, when he ended up his playing career and went back home, he was like, oof, I probably need a job. You know, I have kids. <laughs> yeah. And him and a few former players to start at what they're called now the Dominican Summer League, mm -hmm. which it was, it was going uh, from country to country uh, inside the Dominican. That's how he started managing. He started managing those teams and, and playing a little bit and uh, got the opportunity to do um, winter ball and uh, then do the minor leagues and, and here we are. <laughs> How important do you think it is to have that Dominican Summer League, which now has exploded? And of course, we're going to get into your work with the two Orioles teams. But the fact that there is a presence there and it is so strong now and it is connected with the major leagues, how important is the DSL? Uh, very important. I don't need to tell anybody, but for, I mean, over the years, how many good Dominican players and Latin players have you know, come to play baseball in the States, not only in the big league, and to have a league that uh, operates years around, year round, and for us, um, to with the commitment that, that that we're doing now, it's huge, man. Two teams, about 35 players on each roster. You manage one of those. How has the Orioles' presence in the Dominican changed since Michael Elias has taken over within the past year? 360 degree change, no doubt about it. Last year. When we went back to um, having two teams, I know the deadline was a little tight, but we had the resources and we had the people, you know, Mike and uh, Kobe Perez, to, to make it happen. You know, um, they did their job, per se, to, to bring in the best talent available at the time and put the best people to go get that talent. And uh, it show on the field, it show we, uh, we love two teams uh, in a short period of time with good young talent, a whole bunch of you know, 16, 17, 18 year old kids that I would say 20, 30, 40% of those kids are gonna be here this summer. So, which is, which is a huge step forward uh, in our organization. And these kids are 17, 18 years old. How important is it to develop them at that age? Because a lot of their talents are pretty raw at that point, but it's your job and the job of others like you to develop those talents. These kids, they live home before 16 years old. But sometimes they're, they, they're helped by these Muscones down there. So they might left their houses at 14. 
or you have to even out between, you know, these kids still learning how to play baseball, but he also, he left home at a young age, so you, you, you gotta be a parent, yeah. too. And uh, yes, teaching these kids the everyday grind uh, to become a young, successful man, not only a, a ball player, but a man, it's definitely a grind for us as, as well as coaches. I mean, because raw talent, perfect yeah you know you want that you want a raw talented 16 year old kid but you got to understand too that sometimes this kid they didn't they didn't got the education that you would want a 16 year old kid to have and it's not their fault it's just I mean they're trying to follow this dream that's a huge thing in the Dominican because now you can provide to your family how much joy would you say that you get when you were able to get a kid to uh, not only understand the fundamentals of baseball, but understand the fundamentals of putting in the work to become successful. Uh, believe me, it's, it's like if, if, if a kid of yours is just starting how to read. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's the way it is. I mean, because you get these kids so young and, like you said, so raw and so, like, open-minded. You know, they want to hear from you 24-7. Uh, I want to be around you. They want you know, they'll text you. I have kids text me at night or in the you know during the summer last last year. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I think I'm doing. You know, thank you for everything, which is pretty cool. I mean, yeah. you treat them like your own. That's mm -hmm. that's the way it is. But um, being able to watch them grow and watch them you know develop and watch them learn uh, every step of the way of is a huge. I feel it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to, to stop by in an early morning here at Buck O'Neill Complex. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Be beautiful morning. Felipe Alou Jr. joining us here on a beautiful morning here in Sarasota, Florida.